Hey there, it's Ellie here, pharmacist and cosmetic formulator for Ellie Derm. And in today's video, I just want to spend a few minutes just having a chat to you guys about the use of sunscreen and um, how it can potentially affect our ability, um, our body's ability to synthesize vitamin D. In today's video, video we'll, um, I'll be covering why vitamin D is essential, um, the correlation between vitamin D synthesis, sun, um, sunlight, and also sunscreen use, and also how you can prevent vitamin D deficiency. So vitamin D is actually um, essential for many reasons, including the absorption of calcium, which is essential for keeping our bones strong and also our teeth healthy. Now studies have shown that there's also a um, you know, correlation between um, vitamin D and also um, reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease as, and also helps to regulate mood as well as glucose metabolism. Um, there's also a range of other conditions that vitamin D is also linked to, and um, but we won't go into too much details on that because it's actually quite extensive and, and I'm, when I mean extensive it's actually a lot of conditions. Um, so yeah, so I mean vitamin D is probably not one of those vitamins that are very you know, um, talked about very much, but it's actually very important um, to our body. Um, so yeah, so now vit vitamin D, um, sources for, for vitamin D, um, we not generally can get vitamin D through um, foods. So some, fo um, some foods are very high in vitamin D. Um, you can also get vitamin D through supplementation as well as UV exposure. So just exactly how much um, sun exposure do you need for your body to synthesize vitamin D it actually all depends on um, a range a couple of different things so one is um, ethnicity so um, how dark your skin is because the more melanin you have in your skin the more um, sun exposure you actually need for your body to synthesize um, vitamin D or to convert the inactive form into the active form and also depends on the time of the year as well whether it's winter time or whether it's a summer time because generally in summertime you're going to end up with a lot more um, sunlight so you, you don't need to actually stay out in the sun for as long to um, to get that conversion whereas in the winter time um, you may need to stay out you know for a slightly little bit longer to actually get that conversion if you would like to know um, a little bit more about how much sun exposure you need for vitamin d synthesis depending on your skin type i have included a link in the um, video description below now please note that this is a guide only um, and it can vary slightly between each individual um, but nonetheless it's going to give you a fairly good indication of how much um, you know sun exposure you need and as i was mentioned earlier it's definitely not as much sun exposure as you would expect it's only it's you know it can range from anywhere between 10 minutes to 20 minutes per day um yeah so definitely not a lot at all and there's also a link in the description below as well for foods which are high in vitamin d as well so i hope um that is something that's useful for you someone who don't have a balanced diet don't take any vitamin d supplements and you are covering yourself liberally with sunscreen, are you going to be at risk of vitamin D deficiency? Well, there is that theoretical risk of getting a, a vitamin D deficiency. Fortunately for us, there's been a ton of studies that have been done on the use of vitamin D and also on, sorry, on the use of sunscreen and how it can affect our body's ability to synthesize vitamin D. Um, now, it's um, so one notable study which I did find was actually a, quite a really good study. It was a peer review study, um, and it actually reviewed um, seventy six studies, all individual studies all together. Um, and these seventy six studies included both experimental studies as well as observational studies as well. And now so the study concluded that um, there is very little evidence that sunscreen use can decrease your blood concentration of active vitamin D. However, it should be noted that all the experimental studies and observational studies that have been done or completed have all been around, um, based around SPF of 20 or less. The majority of the um, sunscreen were around um, SPF 15, 16, and some were SPF 20. Um, nowadays, we actually have you know sunscreens which are SPF 30, 50, and even 100 plus. The studies suggest that the reasons why um, the use of sunscreen is not affecting our body's ability to synthesize vitamin D, apart from the fact that um, it was a low SPF um, sunscreen to begin with, um, but the other reasons is because one, we're not reapplying as often as we should, which is every four hours or every two hours if, we're, uh, if we are participating in active sport. Um, and the second thing is, um, you know, we are not applying enough sunscreen to begin with. Um, so a lot of people don't apply, 
you know, 35 mils of sunscreen or 30 to 35 mils of sunscreen for a full body application. And generally people would only use, you know, a very small amount. Um, so yeah, so it is recommended that it's about five mils approximately for the face, each arm, leg, um, and in total about 35 mils or one shot glass for a full body adult, for a full adult application. So as a pharmacist, would I still endorse using a high SPF sunscreen um, even though there is a theoretical risk of a vitamin D deficiency, yes, I would definitely still recommend and still strongly recommend you use an SPF of a minimum 30 plus um, because the risk, the, ther the theoretical risk of um, getting a vitamin D deficiency because of sunscreen use is very low. The only way to find out if you are vitamin D deficient is if you um, get a blood test. Now, please do not rush out and get a vitamin D supplement. Um, if you don't know whether you're vitamin D deficient or not because vitamin D too much vitamin D can actually be a really bad thing for you When there is excess amounts of vitamin D in your body your body can't excrete it like water soluble vitamins such as vitamin C So instead it actually accumulates inside the fat cells and it can cause toxicity So yeah, so vitamin D we don't generally need a lot of it, um, but it is definitely essential for our well-being. And um, yeah, so I hope you find this video useful. And if you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. And also, uh, if you do like content like this, please subscribe and be so you'll be notified for new videos when they are released. Um, my name is Ellie. I'm Pharmacist Cosmetic Formulator for Ellie Derm. And, and hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.